let's go over uh, chain rule of derivatives. Um, so they've given us a function here, and this looks like it's a division question, which is usually um, a quotient rule. Um, but what happened here is there's really no exponent uh, in the numerator of the function. Okay, so what this means is I can kind of rewrite this, and it won't really change anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this to the power of negative one, and whenever you do that, it's uh, you could say like flipping a fraction, okay? So we'll kind of go over an exponent rule here just quickly. If I have um, a over b to the power of, let's say, x, I can invert that fraction by putting b over a to the negative of that exponent. So if I say negative x. So same idea here. Let's say this is to the power of 1. Because I can say it's to the power of 1 and it doesn't change anything. I'm going to make it to the power of negative 1. So when I do that, I'm going to get 7x uh, to the power of 6 plus 14 divided by 1. And all of, whoops, uh, all of that is to the power, like we said, of negative 1 now. Um, well, anything divided by 1, if I do 5 divided by 1, it's... It's just fine. So that fraction essentially disappears. So now I'm working with 7x to the power of 6 plus 14 to the power of negative 1. Okay, so I've kind of changed this question, and I think it was uh, p at x here. Um, so now this is a chain rule, and a chain rule question, I'm going to just kind of write the uh, formula on the left here. f at x is equal to uh, g, uh, how do they write, g at h of x. I believe this is how they write their the chain rule. Oh, no, I think I've written that wrong. Oh, give me okay, um, so if you have something like this, where you have something within uh, a set of brackets, a, a chain rule, uh, when we go to derive this, so the derivative of the whole function, so the whole function is called f at x, that's the name of the entire function, and this is what it consists of, which is like they've broken it into smaller functions. So if we were to derive the whole function, so f prime x, um, you would write it as g, and then write prime, yes. And we keep the original h at x, so whatever's inside of that bracket stays the exact same, nothing changes. And then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside the bracket, so times h prime x. There's a whole bunch of letters, which can be really confusing to look at, but let's try it with these numbers here. So the idea here is that this uh, power of negative 1 is like our, our g. This is what is the outside. And our 7x to the power of 6 plus 14 is our, our h at x. So the first step to this, when we go to derive it, so when we derive something, we write p prime x. So I'm finding the derivative of this. I'm going to find a derivative of the outside first. So the inside, the h at x, is not going to change at all. Everything's going to stay the same for my first set. So I'll kind of highlight it so we can see that. Okay, so this will stay the same, and this is where our, the relationship of our h at x. Um, the outside is very similar to um, when we're deriving just any term. We take the power, and we bring it down in front, and then we subtract 1 from the power. Okay, so it becomes negative 1 in front of our 7x power of 6 plus 14. So this part didn't change. This is our h at x, right? <coughs> And our exponent uh, is negative 1 minus 1, so now it becomes negative 2, okay? So that's the g prime x. That's the, that derivative we've done there. We have to multiply it by the derivative of what's inside now. So now I just focus on the inside of this, and I'm going to write it in purple. Maybe it'll help us. Um, we bring the 6 down, and we multiply it by whatever coefficient's there. So 7 times 6 will give us 42x. Uh, we take the 6 and subtract 1, so 42x to the power of 5, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then 14, because it's a constant value, technically becomes 0, so it, we can just not write anything in. And we're done. So I'm going to highlight to make sense of this. This is this part here. Okay. Um, technically, this is it, but they will probably want you to simplify the question from this point. Okay. So just like I showed you that rule before with a negative exponent, um, essentially what that means is I can turn this into a fraction and I'm going to bring this down. So remember this can be technically over 1. So I want to make this a positive exponent. So I'm going to flip this here. Okay, So we'll do it one step at a time. Um, the negative 1 still stays. 
I'll write it out here, 7x. Actually, sorry, that should be on the bottom now. I skipped that step. Um, it should be 1 over, because I'm going to invert the power. It's all 2. 7x to the power of 6 plus 14. And now this exponent can be written as, um, I'll write it in blue so you can see. It's positive 2, so I've inverted what's inside. And then it's still multiplied by 42, oops, 42x to the power of 5. Okay, so we've got a lot of stuff there. Um, what we can do is you can think of this as I can actually square this. 1 squared is still going to be 1. It's not going to change anything, right? And instead of actually squaring out what the bottom will be, I'm just going to write it as a bracket itself. So it's going to look like this. The negative 1 stays the same. 1 squared is still the value of 1. And it's still multiplied by 42x to the power of 5. The only thing I'm going to do now okay, is I'm just going to write 7x squared plus 14 squared. So the difference in this step was, think of it like I brought this 2 into both of these. On top, which is the 1, I actually squared it. 1 squared is the value of 1. On the bottom, I didn't want to go through that FOIL process, that really long process of writing, so I'm just going to write it simplified like this. So now on top, I just have three terms. I can actually multiply them across so to simplify. So negative 1 times 1 is going to be negative 1, and then negative 1 times 42x to the power of 5 is going to just be negative 42x to the power of 5. So it's going to be equal to negative 42x to the power of 5 divided by and again, there's lots of stuff we could do at the bottom, but this is a pretty simplified version like this. We'll probably keep it like this in this.